On March 20th, 1982, Reliance Industries share suddenly started to fall on the Bombay Stock Exchange. In a matter of minutes, the stock price went from 131 rupees to 121 as almost 350,000 shares were dumped. This looked like the work of the infamous Kolkata Bear Cartel and if continued, the shareholders would lose a lot of money. However, Soon the story changed from the tanking share price to an event which eventually closed down the stock exchange for three days. To understand the story, let's first understand India in the 1980s. At that time, the stock market was a jungle run by different cartels with little to no regulation. And even if there were, they were not imposed. Brokers pray for luck just to survive as they enter the human maelstrom of the trading floor, now the busiest in the world. This is share trading as it used to be, where brokers are elevated to the status of cult heroes and regulation spurned. And one such cartel was the Kolkata Bear Cartel, which included people like Rakesh Junjunwala and Radhakishan Damani, along with the kingpin Manu Manik who made money by shorting stocks and were very successful because of the 14-day settlement period. To understand these two concepts, let's take up an example. Imagine you're observing company A whose share price stands at 100 rupees. You predict that the share price will go down in the coming days but own no shares of this company. So how would you turn this information into financial gain? Well, back in the 1980s, the trading was done on a 14-day settlement period. This basically means that if you decided to sell a share today, you were required to deliver it to the purchaser after 14 days. You could, in theory, sell the share immediately and then repurchase it at any point during that 14-day window. And no one would question how you managed to sell something you initially did not possess. You decide to sell the share in the marketplace at its current value, 100 rupees. By day 5, just as you predicted, the share price drops to 90 rupees. Now you can buy back the share for this lower price, profiting 10 rupees from the transaction. This strategy is known as short selling. The Kolkata Bear Cartel were experts in shorting a stock. And now they had a new target on their mind, Reliance Industries. On the D-Day, the cartel started attacking the shares, bringing the price of the stock down by 10 rupees in minutes. But then, a buying wave began. The more the bears sold, the more demand for the stock rose. Something was clearly not right, as the price started to rise. The buying was done by some unknown NRI investors based in West Asian countries. And these investors eventually bought more than 8 lakh shares. This was unseen in the Indian market, thus leaving everyone confused. The foreign investors or friends of Reliance as they were called created so much demand in the market that the price of the Reliance stock rose from 121 to over 158 in just a few days. One point to remember here is the 14 day settlement period. During this time, both the groups were just entering into contract of sale and purchase. The delivery of the share and the money was to be done after 14 days. Now, if the bear cartel was to buy the shares back now, they would have to buy them back at 20 to 30 rupees more than they sold the shares at, which they were not willing to do. Fast forward to the settlement date. The cartel had to deliver these shares, but they did not have them. Thus enters something called Undha Badla. It was a fee which the bears could pay to the buyers to carry the settlement over the next 14 days. The norm for Undha Badla was a nominal fee of 1 to 2 rupees per share. But the buyers asked for 50 rupees per share just to carry the settlement over the next 14 days. This created a deadlock between the bears and buyers. And buyers refused to let the market open if the trades were not settled or the fee not paid. By this time, there was a panic in the Indian economy. And to solve this, BSC decided that they will open the stock exchange as a special session just for the Reliance shares so that the bear cartel can buy the shares from the market and give it to the friends of Reliance. And as soon as the markets opened, the bears rushed to buy any share of Reliance they could find. The result was a spiral in which the Reliance stock rose sharply to record highs. 
from roughly 125 rupees for a share in march the market price of the stock shot up to 158.85 even touching 202 one day in ahmedabad the bear cartel effectively in one trade had lost over 5 crore this move by the friends of reliance effectively saved its stock but who were these friends of reliance and why would anyone invest so much just to save one stock as it turns out the companies were bizarrely named crocodile fiasco and a bunch of other names which brought over 22 crore rupees to india in order to buy reliance shares and most of the companies were formed just days before the buying happened now the speculation is that dhirubhai ambani himself was the man behind the buying and he used these companies in other countries along with his friends to route money to the market he could not do it himself as there were regulations that did not allow the promoters of the company to buy huge amounts of share of their own company without approval now to clear the picture as soon as the bears started selling the shares ambani through his friends started buying them the demand led to the price going higher and when the bears tried to cover their losses at higher prices it was ambani himself who had sold his shares making a huge profit out of the trade almost bankrupting the bears this move was for the history books and no one tried to mess with reliance and ambani after that ambani's victory marked a turning point in the indian stock market His actions laid the foundation for stronger regulations and underscored the power of retail investors. It is difficult to imagine what Reliance would be if the bears were successful. Would it be the powerhouse it is today or just another company? There have been other successful shots by the bears. Famously, Harshad Mehta, who was left to ruin after their attack. Let us know how you feel about the story and if you liked it, do not forget to subscribe.